In this video, we will take a look at how to calculate the worst case time complexity of selection sort and thereby attain the big O notation. So let's start by defining what the worst case is in selection sort. For an algorithm that is trying to sort an array of elements in ascending order, the worst case would be if the array received is received in descending order. In such a case, both the loops will execute maximum number of times and the if block will be entered at every instance. So let's start by counting the primitive operations. Int temp will take one primitive operation, int min index another one, and now we come to the i loop. So before we get into how many exact primitive operations this statement is going to take, Let's see how many times this loop will execute. I'm going to consider the array of size n, that is the array has n number of elements. So I'm going to assume that n is equal to 5, just for an example. So I say that i is equal to 0, that's where it starts, and it goes all the way till i is less than array.length, which is 5 minus 1. So arrays dot length 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So i is going to go from 0 to 4. So it will be 0, 1, 2, 3. It will not go to 4 because it's going to be strictly less than 4. So how many times does this loop execute? 1, 2, 3, 4. It executes 4 times. So what can we say about this? When n is 5, the loop executes four times. So for any loop or any array of size n, the i loop is going to execute n minus one times. So let's keep this in mind. The initialization is going to take just one primitive operation. And so it will be int i. So, and this will be int j. But even then, this is going to take only one primitive operation. Now we come to the condition. The condition will always take one more than the number of times the loop is executing. This is because the condition will be satisfied the first n minus one times. And then one extra time, it's not going to be satisfied and we will come out of the loop. So, number of times plus 1. So, n minus 1 plus 1 is n. Increment will occur as many times the loop executes. So, this will be plus n minus 1. This will give us 2n. Right. So, now we come to the next statement. On its own, this will take one primitive operation, but it happens n minus 1 times because it's inside the i loop. So this will take n minus 1 as its time. Now let's come to the j loop. So let's find out how many times this j loop is going to execute. Now I have already said for a problem size 5, the values of i are going to be 0, 1, 2, 2 and 3. What have I said about j? j goes from i plus 1 all the way till j is less than array dot length, till j is less than 5. So let's see. When i is 0, j is first 1, 2, 3, 4. It does not go to 5 because j is strictly less than 5. Then when i is 1, it's 2, 3, 4. When i is 2, j is 3 and 4. When i is 3, j is just 4. So, how many times does this j loop execute? When i is 0, it is executing 4 times, then 3 times, then 2 times, then 1 time. So, the j loop executes once, twice, thrice, keeps going until it reaches n minus 1 times. So, let me write that down. j loop executes once, then twice, then thrice, 
until it reaches n minus 1 times. It does not execute more than that. Now, let's call this expression x. This is just to make the counting easier. We don't have to write this whole thing every time. So let's see. First we have the initialization. On its own, initialization takes one primitive operation, but it will happen as many times as the loop is called. So it will be called as many times as I loop runs. So it will be n minus 1. This is for the initialization. Now we have a condition. Condition is checked as many times as the loop runs plus 1. So it's going to be x plus 1. So this is x times is the number of times that j loop runs. Now j plus plus is the increment. It occurs as many times as the loop runs. x. Now your question might be, why am I not multiplying x or x plus 1 with n minus 1? Because I multiplied 1, which is for the, um, which is for the initialization with n minus 1. This is because when I say x, I mean 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till n minus 1. It factors all the runs of the i loop. So, at some instance of i, the j loop will execute once. At some instance of i, the j loop will execute twice. This 1 plus 2 plus 3 till n minus 1 is inclusive of all the times the i loop runs. So we don't need to multiply this by n minus 1. We have factored in all the cases of i. So now we know that the j loop executes x times. So the if statement on its own, it is a condition checking two elements of the array. So this indexing into the array will take one primitive operation. So that becomes two primitive operations and the condition check, which is the third primitive operation. This will take 3x times. Now, the if statement is always entered since it's the worst case and so minimum index equal to j. This takes one primitive operation on its own but it will occur x times. So this will take x units of time. Now we have come out of the j loop. We are in the i loop now and we have to perform these three operations. Each of these operations include one indexing and one assignment. So it each of these on its own will require two primitive operations but this is inside the i loop and so it will happen n minus one times now we come out of the i loop and we return the sorted array this will take one unit of time now that we have counted the primitive operations all we have to do is add it up so adding it up, I will get time in terms of n as 1 plus 1 plus 2n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 3x plus x plus 2 into n minus 1 plus 2 into n minus 1 plus 2 into n minus 1 plus 1. Simplifying this, we get 6x plus 10n minus 4. Now, I want my time function to be purely in terms of capital N. So, let's see how we can simplify x. We know that x is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till plus n minus 1. As you can see, this is a series in arithmetic progression. So, in arithmetic progression, if we have a series 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till k, we say that the sum of the series will be k into k plus 1 divided by 2. So, let's apply this here. We say that x is equal to n minus 1, which is our k, n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which we get n minus n minus 1 divided by 2. Substituting x in this equation, we say that t of n is equal to 3n square minus 3n plus 10n minus 4. This is 
3 n square plus 7 n minus 4. Now based on your implementation the constants will change but let's find out what the big O notation will be. We find out the big O notation by taking that term which will influence the growth of the time most with regards to n. So that term is going to be 3n square because this will affect the growth of the time with respect to n quadratically. So we say that t of n is big O of, ignoring the constants in this term, we say it's big O of n square. Or we say that selection sort is an algorithm which runs in big O of n square. This is how you determine the big O notation of the algorithm selection sort.